Vamos, Yannick. Welcome, Carlos. Uh, <coughs> congratulations on the win earlier today and uh, leveling the competition at four points for all. How hard was it beating Ben earlier at this level? Well, it's, it was uh, really, really tough. I mean, Ben, I think, uh, so, uh, so uh, at really high level in the in this kind of competitions. I think, uh, I mean, playing for for his team, for his uh, partner. I mean, he he increased his his level even uh, even better. Uh, so it was a really solid match, I guess, uh, from both sides. Uh, really happy that the, you know at the beginning uh, of, of the match, I. I tried to, to put uh, as much return as I, as I could. Uh, I'm playing uh, long rallies. I think I, I did a, a pretty solid match uh, from the return, uh, and I think it was uh, really important for me. Um, yeah, uh, really happy with the, with the level in the in difficult moments, having uh, a few break points uh, down with uh, really good shots, really good points. So uh, really happy to, to give uh, two points uh, to, to Team Europe. Thank you. As in previous press conferences, we started in English and then moved to Spanish later. You talked about the returns. He said that when you played in Canada last year, you were chipping your returns, whereas today you hit them low. Was that a deliberate strategy? And do you think that's what was the big difference in the match? Well, obviously, I mean, playing against him, I always uh, hit a good returns, but uh, you never, you never know uh, which uh, which serve he's gonna he's gonna do it. You know, probably he's gonna he's gonna hit that two thirty uh, serve or or one ninety slices uh, or kick. You know, it's a really unpredictable serve. Uh, I mean, he hit it uh, second serve two twenty, so it was a. Uh, his his service is crazy, <laughs> and uh, I try to to be as much focused as I can. You know, in the in the re you know in the return games, uh, as I said, try to, to put uh, as much as I can and and playing the ro long rallies. Uh, I knew that I I was going to have my chances if I stayed there. Uh, he missed a couple of first serve, and then you know in the second in the second serve I I stayed there and tried to be uh, as much as aggressive as I can, just to to put in myself in a in a attack position. So uh, that's what I tried to do in in the whole match, and yeah, today was a a really a really good point for for my side. <coughs> Hi, uh, Carlos. I just wanted to ask. I know you played doubles yesterday, but. Today, for your singles match, how did it feel having guys who were normally your rivals for most of the year cheering you on? And what kind of energy did they give you? And did you find it strange or fun? Or uh, how did you find it? Uh, it was fun. Uh, honestly, it was, a, it was a great feeling having, having them supporting me behind. Uh, being as a coach, uh, sometimes it was, uh, it was great. Having Bjorn in the, in the bench as well, it's, um, it is a great, uh, a great support for me. Uh, normally, I, I watch my, my team uh, during the you know after every point. Here, I'm I'm looking at my partners and beyond more than, than my team. So it's a, it is a different feeling uh, for me. It was a, an unique experience that I that I enjoyed a lot. Um, you know, having for example Grior all the time. Uh, you know. Coaching me, uh, saying me the tactics, what I have to do during the match. It was um, it, it was crazy, uh, and having yeah, Stefanos and all the all the players behind me in in all the you know uh, break times. It's, uh, it was uh, it was great for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this experience uh, for a long time, uh, and uh, I honestly learn learn a lot from from them as well. You and Yannick Sinner won all the Grand Slam titles this mm. year, and I feel like people already start talking about a new potential era of dominance after the big three with the two of you. Do you personally also have the feeling that the rivalry between you two could develop into something similar to what Raj, uh, Roger and Rafa had, for example? Well, uh, a lot of people talk about it, uh, and I hear it, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I hope so. I hope that the, we uh, our rivalry is going gonna, is gonna to be or uh, almost than, than the big three had uh, during the, the, the whole career. Uh, I, I don't know. This is the first year that they, we share all the Grand Slams. Uh, hopefully, gonna 
keep going like, like that, uh, sharing great moments, fighting for, for the great tournaments, the Grand Slams, Master 1000, the Masters. Uh, <clears throat> So let's see how it's gonna be in the in the future, the next uh, the next few years. Uh, if uh, we are gonna stay like that at, at, at this level, uh, I think we are gonna build uh, our great rivalry, uh, great relationship of the court as well. So uh, hopefully, uh, having having here having him uh, here on the tour for for a long time because he puts me to be a better player every every day. Uh, he pushed me to to practice him 100% just to try to beat him, you know, in the next uh, in the next matches. So it's uh, it's it's great, and, and hopefully having having that rivalry that the, the big three has during their career. Carlos, you're 21 years old. You're let's say Hall of Famer mm -hmm. already. Are you sometimes scared that you lose motivation, or how how you find yourself all the time motivated or with what kind of people you surround yourself that you keep yourself on a high level mm -hmm. because competition is high but you're already did a lot well honestly it is uh it is difficult uh i mean sometimes uh i didn't feel motivated uh, motivated at all uh and it is a difficult moment i mean as i said many many times the you know the calendar is so tight. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tournaments, no days off, uh, or not as much days off as uh, I want. Um, and sometimes I, I really want to take uh, some days for for myself that I can't because I have to practice, I have to travel, I have to you know uh, the jet lag. Sometimes uh, when you're uh, traveling during the uh, around the world. Uh, so sometimes uh, you don't want to go to tournaments. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, and I've and I've been uh, feeling uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this feeling few times uh, already. That I, I don't I don't want to go to to that tournament because I want to stay at home for uh, with my family, with my friends, and I have to to find the motivation just to go and and put the the, the right tennis or the right face in the practice and on, on the matches. I'm. An ambitious guy. I, I always want to to win uh, every match that I go, but uh, as I say many many times, uh, my my best tennis showed up when I smile. I'm enjoying on court, and sometimes it's difficult to to find that that rhythm or that good feeling. So, um, I mean, I I want to to be focused on my team, my family, and try to uh, to uh, play at my best in in every practice in in every in every match. That's to to be in the in the top of the of the ranking, and uh, I think that's uh, or it is the the best options to to keep motivated. <coughs> Any further questions in English? You said about the schedule. That's too much tournaments. Are you players talking? Like all together to maybe stand up and say that's enough. Maybe two weeks <clears throat> master series probably is not good for you. I think you're playing too much because they say okay you have more rest, but this is not a rest to be honest. Well, uh, honestly, there, there are a lot of uh, really good players in, on on tour, and obviously uh, each player has uh, their own feeling. So a lot of players uh, wants to to play more or even more. Uh, a lot of players feel like uh, okay, it is a good calendar, and a lot of players uh, say that uh, it's really tight and a lot of a lot of tournaments during the whole year. I'm I'm the kind of player who who think that is a, a lot of tournaments during the the, the year, uh, mandatory tournaments. And uh, probably during the the next few years, it's gonna be even more tournaments, more mandatory tournaments. So it's, uh, I mean, probably they are gonna kill us uh, in, a, in in some way. Uh, right now, they are showing up a lot of a lot of injured uh, because of the ball, because of the calendar, because uh, a, a lot of a lot of things. So probably at some point, uh, a lot of good players are gonna miss a, a lot of tournament because of that, because uh, they are, they have to, to take about their, their bodies, uh, they have to take care, uh, care about their life. I mean, uh, they they have family, they have uh, a lot of uh, other stuff in in life than than tennis, so they have to take care, take care about it as well. So it's it's getting it's getting too much, I guess. Last question in English. <coughs> Hi, Carlos. Uh, yesterday you lost, uh, and in tennis you face a loss 
almost every single week. How do you deal with it mentally? Do you work, for example, mm. with someone on your mentality? Well, I, I want to think that, uh, okay, I, uh, I lose uh, this time, but at tennis, uh, we are lucky because in tennis you, we have a lot of a lot of opportunities if i if i lose uh, this week next week we, we are going to have another opportunity to to be better or uh, to win to win the tournament or uh, to have a, a really good feeling so uh you know it's <clears throat> it's about uh preparation i guess if uh, you feel like you have done a really good preparation between between tournaments or before the the tournament start uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if uh, you you lose or win. It's about uh, the the good feeling you you have. I mean, I've uh, lost many many times. Sometimes uh, I left the court with a really good feeling because I played well, I felt well on court, and uh, you know, uh, coming to the next tournament, I I'm thinking that they're gonna do a good results or uh, or I'm gonna get better. Uh, a lot of them, I I felt like uh, I was. Not doing the right thing, so I felt I felt bad. So uh, tennis, uh, we have a lot of opportunities that uh, we have to think uh, positive all the time, and we have to think about it. We're on to Spanish. We have time for about three mm -hmm. questions. Una carne, en una buena con la misnoria y el gran juego. Te quería preguntar, has dicho que a veces pierdes un poco la motivación. Eh, da la sensación de que la mejor manera para recuperarla es tener de dos lados como las de Estados Unidos, después de ellos le vienes arriba. Eh, tienes esa sensación. Eh, y también si la confianza que pudiste perder en Estados Unidos la has recuperado ya con las victorias y el buen juego en la Copa de Ibis y aquí en la Labor Cup. Bueno, al final, eh, la, como he dicho la, en inglés, la temporada es, es muy larga, hay muchos torneos. Eh, yo, gracias a Dios, juego de más, muchos partidos eh, y, y la verdad que al final eh, en algunos torneos se, se, hace, se hace pesado. Obviamente, yo creo que también tampoco hay olvidar que, que soy joven, tengo 21 años, eh, iré aprendiendo también de, de este tipo de, de situaciones, que al final esto para mí también, también es nuevo, este tipo de, de sensaciones. Eh, bueno, tengo que también que, que ir conociéndome poco a poco a mí, a mí mismo, lo que necesito, lo que no necesito, lo que me viene bien, lo que no, y poco a poco pues ir, ir mejorando e ir, e ir madurando, ¿no? Y, y la verdad que, bueno, después de, de la gira americana, la verdad que estos, estorne, estos torneos de, de equipo, que al final no voy, no voy solo, tengo a, a mi equipo alrededor, eh, que viajo durante, durante todo el año con, con ellos y, y también los, los jugadores, eh, tanto... Cuando jugué con, con España, los, eh, con Bautista, con eh, Marcel, con Pablo, con Pedro, eh, los tuve ahí detrás todo, todo el tiempo y la verdad que eso me vino muy bien para recuperar la, la confianza y también ayudó mucho los partidos que, que jugué, tanto aquí en la Leiber, que, que la verdad que es un, es un gran torneo, con una experiencia, una experiencia única que también tener a, a mis compañeros ahí animando todo, todo el rato a, ayuda muchísimo. Hola, Carlos. Hoy estaba... Fer, la grada, que me imagino que te habrás quedado a gusto con lo que has hecho delante de él. Luego le has dado un abrazo a, a Borg, que estaba también al lado John McEnroe, y da la sensación de que tienes 21 años y ya te consideran uno de ellos, de alguna manera. ¿Cómo te hace sentir eso a ti y en qué lugar crees que vas a quedar tú en la historia al lado de estos, de estos cracks? Bueno, pues eh, la verdad que para mí es increíble. Obviamente eh, lo que han hecho Bjorn y y McEnroe en, en la historia del tenis es, es algo único, ¿no? Han puesto el tenis en, en lo más alto de, del deporte, eh, gracias a la historia, a la rivalidad que, que han tenido y para mí estar eh, rodeado de ellos o poder disfrutar de estas experiencias junto, junto a ellos es, para mí es algo, algo único, o sea, experiencias que no voy a olvidar en, en mi vida, eh, mi padre también lo tengo ahí en la, en la grada y lo tengo aquí en el torneo, pues... Eh, para él, McEnroe y, y Bion, que, que son de su generación, eh, la verdad es que él los admira muchísimo y yo creo que, que para mí también, que yo esté rodeado de, rodeado de ellos, eh, para él es un, es un orgullo. Así que son, son experiencias eh, únicas, obviamente con, con Federer ahí en la grada, pues para mí ha sido un, 
ha sido algo único no poder verlo ahí, que disfrute de, de mi tenis o espero que haya disfrutado de, de, del partido y, y de mi tenis y, y no sé, quién sabe, ¿Quién, quién, nadie sabe lo que va a pasar en el, en el futuro. Eh, ojalá que, que pueda acercarme a, a sus carreras o, o incluso pasarlas, es algo que, que me motiva mucho de, en, en estos años y, y veremos a ver eh, en qué posición quedo el día de mañana. Carlos, has hablado antes del, del tema de, del calendario, ha sido para ti una, una temporada muy dura, muy, muy exigente. ¿Cómo llegas al tramo final? ¿Cómo te encuentras de energía, de, de, sobre todo de motivación? Esa motivación que, que has mencionado antes, porque es verdad que queda poco, pero quedan cosas muy, muy importantes en juego. Bueno, la verdad que ha sido una temporada dura. Eh, probablemente, bueno, probablemente, no, creo que soy uno de los jugadores que menos torneos ha, ha jugado, pero probablemente uno de los que más partidos haya, haya jugado. Eh, voy experimentando cosas nuevas como el tema de, de, de la lesión perderme torneos importantes por, por culpa de, de la lesión saber cómo, cómo manejarlo volver volver bien eh, y, e ir jugando muchos muchos partidos obviamente las, las temporadas se, se hacen muy muy exigentes muy largas eh, el cuerpo, la, la mente se, se va agotando poco a poco. Ahora mismo, como he dicho, yo creo que la Davis y esta competición me ayudan mucho a, a recuperar un poco la alegría en, en la pista, eh, el volver a sentirme, a sentirme yo, a sentirme bien en, en la pista y enfocar lo, lo que viene y los próximos torneos de la mejor manera posible. Ahora viene la gira asiática, ya quedan eh, cada vez menos torneos, pero torneos muy, muy importantes que tengo muchas ganas de, de hacerlo bien y ahora mismo pues, eh, tengo muchas ganas de, de ir para allá, mostrar mi, mi buen juego y cada, y cada vez ir poco a poco sintiéndome cada vez mejor. No sé si te planteas el hecho de jugar mañana en función del resultado de hoy o... Eh, si el equipo me necesita, yo voy a estar ahí para, para, para ellos. Y yo intento, al final, todo el mundo tiene uno, un objetivo. Si, si hablando con el equipo, si ellos eh, consideran que, que tengo que jugar mañana, yo, yo voy, a, voy a jugar mañana. Yo estoy, yo estoy para ellos y, y la verdad que, que ganar la Lever es una cosa que, que me motiva. Yo creo que, que es bonito y, y así que, bueno, yo creo que dependiendo también cómo, cómo vaya los partidos hoy, eh, veremos a ver. Tengo que hablar con, con el equipo, pero, pero lo dicho, si ellos me necesitan, yo mañana jugaré. Thank you, Carlos. Gracias.